Well, good morning, church. It's great to be back with you again today and to welcome you to this time of worship together, wherever you are. Well, today we're thinking about how all are welcome to God. We'll be looking at the story of a woman in our Bible reading who was on the edge. She was considered unworthy. But how she found healing and mercy and forgiveness and the immense love of God as she encountered Jesus. This is a wonderful story. And through it, we discover that Jesus is the one who gives us those things and so much more. We welcome Bishop Bev today, later in our service, to tell us more about that. But as we begin today, I invite you to look to Jesus in our story and in your heart. And no matter where you've been or what you've done, you will find that God meets you in that place and you will, he will give you his life, which is all we need. As we ponder that and let that flow through our service, we're going to begin now with our first song, which is As the Deer Pants for the Water. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We join together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And with God's promise of forgiveness for when we come, we bring ourselves to him now uh, as we confess to him the things that we have done or the things that we've thought that aren't right. So Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. 
So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith as we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and ashamed. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I love to confess my sins. I don't really enjoy doing it, but I'm always so grateful afterwards. There's just a sense of God uh, cleaning us from the inside out. And our next song reflects that. Uh, it's called Shine from the Inside Out. And Kate will be doing actions uh, in the corner of the screen. So if you've got energy, I encourage you to get up and to, uh, as the words say, shine from the inside out. Let your actions display what's going on inside with the love and the joy of God inside you. So we're going to sing and then it'll be on to our Bible reading and our sermon from Bishop Bev. reading is from Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I hope you are keeping well and safe in these extraordinary days of the pandemic. How things have changed for us over these past few months. We talk a lot about new normals and reimagining our future with questions like, what do we need to let go of? And what do we need to take with us as we journey forward? These are really important questions, I think. What has lockdown taught you about yourself, the church and discipleship? What do we need to build upon? How hungry has a Eucharistic fast made you for the sacrament? What does it mean to be the body of Christ in such a time as this? These are questions for all of us as we emerge out of this. I wonder if Jesus was pondering similar questions as he reimagined 
the worshipping community post-resurrection. Have you ever noticed how locked in we can become to ways of doing things? It can be so challenging sometimes trying to cast a new vision when people, especially those with a powerful or lobbying voice, are locked in to how things are and are resistant to change. We catch a glimpse of this, I think, in our gospel reading, in the tension of the outplaying of Jesus' forward vision and the disciples' locked in vision. And of course, there's a woman caught up right in the middle who wants to be part of this new world order. A Canaanite woman, a young mum, she shouts to Jesus, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. She kneels before him and she pleads for her daughter. They're face to face, one seeing the future, the other seeing hope. What did the disciples see? Well, they see a Canaanite, a woman, a non-Jew, who has no right to Jesus. She should be invisible, yet here she is intruding on their space and their time, and she's not even doing this quietly. Send her away, they say. You know, the disciples have a real problem with blocking people from Jesus. You'll recall they block children, beggars, lepers, even people ministering in Jesus' name. And Jesus relentlessly teaches them that he actually wants his followers to bring people to him. He doesn't want them to block. He wants us to notice those on the edge, to hear the solitary cry and to help people find their way to him. He wants people to know that they're a beloved child of God and under judgment and mercy. So what of this woman? Well, I hear you saying Jesus wasn't very nice to her. In fact, he was very rude. He calls her a dog. What's that all about? What I'd like to do is draw from some wonderful insight of Kenneth Bailey of Blessed Memory. Kenneth was a priest theologian who spent much of his life in Israel-Palestine, living among the people, studying the scriptures from within the geographical and cultural context. To understand this story, Kenneth tells us we need to see a play within a play being enacted before us. This skillful technique is used elsewhere in the Gospels, and it's very often used on stage. Jesus looks into the woman's face as she kneels before him, pleading to him. A conversation is taking place between them, but Jesus is actually speaking for the benefit of the hearer. That's the disciples and you and me. Jesus is saying audibly what the disciples are thinking. But I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And by effectively calling her a dog, the disciples are hearing their own words spoken back to them. But as Jesus speaks, there's a parallel uh, non-communication, non-verbal communication taking place. Under his gaze, the woman clearly feels safe. She's able to place her trust in him and she has confidence, assurance, and courage to play out the script. He says, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she says, even the little dogs, even the pups, eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. There's a playful interaction between them both. And I just can't help myself here. Did you catch the Eucharistic reference? She's asking the giver of the bread of life even for the crumbs. The crumbs are enough to heal her child. From the scriptures, we know when people bring those in need of healing to Jesus, Jesus responds with healing. The only time there seems to be an issue was in Nazareth, his hometown, when people just couldn't get beyond Jesus, the carpenter, the son of Joseph. We know too, when Jesus sees faith and courage, he's deeply moved by it. He calls it out, doesn't he? This woman comes to him, acknowledging that Jesus is Lord and Messiah. That's what Son of David means. The disciples miss this completely. Like so many of us, they're blinded by their own assumptions, prejudices and biases. It's only when we get to the crunch line in, the, in this drama, the climax of the story, that they get it when Jesus says, oh woman, great 
is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. The disciples and the earliest followers of Jesus really needed to break the mould and expand their vision of what it meant to be the people of God. The Messiah is the light of salvation for all the nations. He's the fulfilment of the prophecy of Isaiah. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And what I love in this story is that it's a young Gentile mum who teaches us this. It's little wonder Jesus responds by saying, great is your faith. Friends, who were the people that weren't included among our members when we went into lockdown? Who are the people we have somehow blocked? As we emerge from the pandemic, what steps do we need to take to hear the cries and to see those who are presently beyond our sight? This is a whole church discussion, isn't it? And without the conversations, we may never discuss or uh, never discover the blocker within ourselves. As we emerge from all this, I pray God will draw us together into a stronger, healthier and more confident body with a renewed vision for the poor and the excluded. A shared responsibility to reach out in Jesus' name and to lead others to him. And God give us renewed hunger for the living bread. Together in the strength of the Spirit, may we build a bigger church, making a bigger difference, with more people knowing Jesus and more justice in the world. Friends, stay safe. Have a lovely August. And God bless you all. Amen. So who do you feel like in our story today? The Canaanite woman, feeling unworthy, unlovable, rejected? Or maybe you feel like the disciples. There are others out there who really don't deserve what we deserve. Bishop Bev has given us so much to think about and that none of us are worthy of what Jesus offers but actually all of us through him can find God's incredible love and grace and enter into his life. So I wonder what God has been saying to you in today's service so far. I'm going to give us some time now to pause and reflect and have some music just to give ourselves a moment or two before we move into our prayers. So again, as we do so often say, we invite God to come as we say, come Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the beautiful world you have created, for the trees and fields, mountains and meadows, oceans and rivers, for the birds that fly and the animals that roam, 
for it is in your wonderful creation we see your omnipresence. Help us to appreciate your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you, Heavenly Father, your church, especially in these darkened times. Give her courage and compassion to reach out to all those who are seeking you, to all those who are looking for the peace that only Jesus gives. We ask that you give Mike and Andy and all those delivering worship the power of your Holy Spirit to renew them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, cared for the needs of everyone, grant us the understanding and resolution to create in this country a just social order. Deepen our concerns for the poor, the old, the homeless and the suffering, and use us as servants of your kingdom to carry out your will in our national and international life, especially in these times when we need to work collectively and not just consider our own individual wants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the needs of the world, especially for those in Lebanon, who are suffering bereavement, injury, homelessness as a result of human negligence. We pray they feel your loving touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you give to us and all your people, in times of anxiety, serenity, in times of hardship, courage, in times of uncertainty, patience, and at all times, a quiet trust in your fatherly love and wisdom. For the only solid ground in our earthly lives is the love of Jesus. Gathering our prayers and, pray and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Just blood. 
I hope you've enjoyed uh, our service today and that you've been reminded how you can find all these wonderful things in Jesus, this life with God that goes beyond our understanding. We'll no doubt be unpacking that at Coffee at the Rectory. And so please do join us on Facebook Live. Look up for Zachary Parish on Facebook and join us live there. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. So now we're just going to have our closing prayers. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.